Well, and uh, I wanted to work through a p-value example to give you a taste for it. And this is a totally made up example, but I put PGCC in it. It says in a national poll, university students sleep 7.02 hours per night. In a poll of 202 students conducted at PGCC, students reported uh, sleeping 6.90 hours plus or minus 0.84 hours. And then the question is, is there less than a 5% chance with this p-value that these numbers are the same. And if you look at these two numbers and their standard deviations plotted here, they're very close to each other. But when you have a population of 200 or a large number of students, you get to use, instead of the standard deviation, you get to use something called the standard error. And this is number Z that we're gonna calculate is going to end up being the number of standard errors from the national average. So even though these two numbers are very close to each other and their uh, standard deviations overlap, there's a way to tell that even if these two numbers are statistically different. All right, and then I've defined my standard error. It's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of data points. So divided by the square root of 202 here. Um, Anyway, so uh, uh, we'll go on. Um, same question. Here's our calculation for Z that says we are 2.03 standard errors from the average. And the negative sign just means since it's 6.9, it's lower than the number. So we're less than two standard errors away. And here's the source for this example that I'm using, by the way. And then you go to a Z versus P table. And I know these are, these, it's starting to sound like a chemistry or a physics problem, I know, but there's a process and steps. But you look up minus 2.03 and you look where the numbers cross and you get your P value. And our P value is 0 0.0212, which means that since P is less than 0.05, these numbers have a less than 5% chance of being the same. And therefore, the students at PGCC do get less sleep than the national average of university students. So uh, that's a little introduction to P and how it works, because we're going to see some p-values. And we're going to want our p-value to be less than 0 0.05 to really make solid conclusions. All right, now the next thing that comes up a lot in these studies is the hazard ratio, HR. And a working definition of the hazard ratio is the probability, is the ratio of the probability of events in a treatment group compared to the probability of events in a control group. And I'll just say right here, to truly calculate the hazard ratio, you need crazy statistics. I have not even gone anywhere near that but I have found a useful approximation. And let's get into that, okay? So it says, to get a rough idea of the hazard ratio, you look at the percent of events for a treatment group. And our treatment group this time that we're gonna eventually talk about is people who drink coffee. And then you're gonna look at percent of events for the control group, and that's gonna be people who do not drink coffee. And so for example, if you have some subjects, and uh, there's a certain number get heart failure over a 10 year period, and you calculate the percent, that's gonna be the percent that goes in the bottom down here. And then for another group of subjects, you get a different percent that get heart failure. That's the treatment group that goes on the top. And the hazard ratio that we approximate, and again, this is, a, this is a total approximation. There's much more to this, but we get relatively good numbers using a simple approach, which since I'm an engineer, I love simple approaches that get me decent numbers. So the hazard ratio is 0 0.93 for this, and that is equal to a 7% reduction. So think of one as the standard hazard. So a 7% or 0 0.07 uh, difference in the risk of getting heart failure during the 10 year period. So, and again, our numbers won't be exact, but we'll use numbers from those big tables that I showed to actually get an idea of hazard ratios. 